Can you hear my whispers? This is quite possibly the sentence that I remember the most when I revisit this CD. This was the start of something really, really unique. To this day, there isn't any 2D music project out there that has a group that sounds exactly like Lolo D. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the debut CD by this amazing trio, which is called Univer. Let's kick off this episode of Sayu Lounge. <laughs> Welcome to Seo Lounge, I am your host Vanessa and today let's talk about Lolo D's Univer. So from this point on, I'm not following any script and I just wanted to talk about a CD that really marked me in more ways than one. And as I was basically deciding which CDs I'm going to talk about in 2024 for this podcast, this CD had to be in it. Univer was the first contact that any fan, now fan, of Lolo D had with the group, especially as the group was starting and if you were following the Hanadol franchise up until then, you were at least curious about who Lolo D were or who the members were or what they were going to add to the franchise. So you must have at least checked their music back then. And if you haven't, right now you are going to revisit or visit The, that CD for the very first time as I revisit it. Univer was released in 2020 and it was the very first CD by Lolo D, the trio, the lyrical pop trio, with compositions exclusively by Takeshi Hama, easily the best composer for 2D music projects. I'm not even going to say outside of it because it is a given that he is an amazing composer, but for 2D music projects, There are very few composers out there that can match the quality that he delivers, basically. You do have something really, really unique. Takeshi Hama is known for composing music for video games. And usually the soundtrack for video games is usually in a tone that is more dramatic. It's more... It's made to sound epic. It is full-on blown orchestra down your ears. It is made for you to feel something. It is a, the type of music that is... It has a lot of storytelling without having any lyrics. So the composers for soundtrack music for games usually are really, really good at telling stories without lyrics. And Takeshi Hama was aware of, of course, because he was composing music exclusively as well for Quell in the Tsuki Pro franchise. He is the only composer for Quell. So that's quite amazing. Uh, whereas on the other side, John Sun is actually composing songs for three different groups. In this case, Takeshi Hama was added to the franchise to compose exclusively for Quell. In this case, Takeshi Hama was brought to the Hanadol franchise to help Lolo D flesh out their music. And as soon as I saw his name, I was aware that he had created really amazing songs for Quell. But Quell do not have the style of music that you now know that Lolo D have. So I was not expecting what we were going to get in here. Because, of course, I was not that familiar with Takeshi Hama's compositions for the Zelda games, as well as for Metal Gear. So, I was not aware of his compositions for both franchises, for both games franchises, so I didn't know the scope or the extent of his capabilities as a composer, and I was impressed in here. Univer was, as I said, released in 2020, and the group was announced, Lolo D, uh, as part of the Hanadol franchise, a bit out of nowhere for many fans. They didn't know why a new group was joining in, and they didn't even knew if the group was going to add anything new to the franchise. They were not expecting what Lolo D brought. I believe there was no one out there that could have predicted that Lolo D was going to be a lyrical pop group with orchestral music. I believe no one was expecting that. It was too niche of a, a focus, and it still is a, a niche focus for the group. But back then, it was even more niche than ever because there was only one group that was focused on lyrical pop music. It was growth in the Tsuki Pro franchise. Why add another group in the same vein or the same style if growth didn't necessarily sell that well with that music genre? 
but this was a necessary step for the the whole drama, the whole world building, the whole quality that the Hanadol franchise brings because it is a franchise really really focused on storytelling and even if like myself you do not follow necessarily the drama CDs, I intend to do so when I have free time but uh, do not have that free time right now. But for those of you that do not have the time to check the drama CDs, if you go to Lolo D's songs you will understand the storytelling. Same thing with Anthos. You will understand in some way the storytelling going on. You will understand that the songs tie up with bigger events, with more, more important things that may not be completely told in the songs, but will hint at something that happened in the drama CDs. So it is the type of music that focuses a lot on storytelling. And Lolo D really appeared to complement what Anthos was doing back then, and Anthos has an amazing lineup, but still, when I saw the lineup for Lolo D, I was completely in awe because we were going to get the best out of the best at almost all positions. You have Toshiki Toyonaga. By now, you should know, he is basically the best singer among male Sayu. He does everything and he does everything right. And then you have Daiki Yamashita trained singer, he was a singer before he was a voice actor, he was actually taking classes to become a singer, and he's really, really well versed in the most varied music genres. In here, he does an amazing job. And then you have Shunsuke Takeuchi, who is a singer that has a lot of power in that booming bass voice, and he can sing everything, but he excels in adding a little bit of drama and R&B vibes to his delivery. So when I saw this lineup, I was sure that they were going to sound good unless the music was bad. And that's because I didn't know what uh, Hamatakeshi was going to pull off in here. Univer is amazing from start to finish. Uh, this is a CD that I, I listened to and I instantly fell in love with Lolo D. I didn't need much to fall in love with the group. I knew something special was in here. As soon as Empty Dream started playing, I knew that something really, really special was going to happen. This was not your common pop idol group. This was not going to be one of those groups that want to sound edgy just for the sake of it. You knew for sure that this CD was going to be dark as hell, because the songs hint at that. The songs aren't necessarily the darkest that uh, Lolo D have released since uh, their debut. They have released much, much darker songs as of late. But they started with a tone that not many people were expecting. They had a really dark undertone to their music. They were betting a lot on sounding dreamy and being dreamy, which is something that Anthos was also doing, but the kind of dreamy you get with Lolo D is more akin to a nightmare than of a dream. And I do find this quite interesting. I've said it before, I do enjoy music that has a dark undertone, and Lolo D really cater to my tastes with that darkness that they bring with their songs. Of course, the darkness is tied to the storyline that is going on, the characters themselves, and the context in which they are performing the, so the songs. But for me, it was something that instantly attracted my attention. As Empty Dream started playing, this is a song that back then I, I didn't even know how to react. I knew something really interesting was happening and something really special was definitely happening but i didn't know that it was going to be that good it is a song that starts with a really really interesting edm vibe with those synths hitting in the background the vocals harmonizing with each other slowly and with something that i love a whole lot about lola d they have really really open vowels when they speak when they sing and that makes the performance all the more dramatic. I do know that this, of course, was a direction that they had on the vocal end to sound grandiose, to sound more dramatic, more intense without being aggressive. And it made the song really shine. Empty Dream is the start or the, the debut song that many groups wished they had. This is really, really awesome. And the intro is quite long, and slowly you get something more dreamy, and the instrumental starts to open to show you a really wide soundscape in which there is only light. 
this is a dream after all you can do whatever you want you can wish whatever you want you can do whatever you want and that dream is yours for the taking you can do whatever you want and that's the vibe you get with this song but the chorus is so so grandiose but the soundscape is so empty that when you get to the first i should say the first intermission or the intermission and Toshikito Tanaka starts wailing in the background doing those kinds of choral vocals you start to notice that well maybe this group is actually taking this really seriously and this down tempo dance song starts to take a different turn and that turn is really 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 good this is a song that I love a whole lot. It is a song that I I don't remember how I reviewed it back then, but honestly, looking back, I I do love this song a whole lot and I feel that this was the very first taste that we got about or on what Lolody's music could be like. Although their music has changed a whole lot since they started, they no longer sound like they sounded in Empty Dream. This was a good indicator that the group was going to be good. Even if they kept doing this type of music, they were going to sound really good. When the group was performing in the unison in the second chorus in Empty Dream, that's when you get the full-blown quality. The three vocals do not overlap, they complement each other, and you can clearly listen to all three within the soundscape. That's something that very few groups can achieve and very 2D groups have a lineup that can achieve that. At the same time, few 2D groups have a composer as good as Takeshi Hama behind the, the production. So this is something that makes a big difference in what we got in here in this performance and how that performance ended up connecting with me as a listener for the very first time when I listened to this song. On the other hand, we have Addictive Whispering, and I'm going to let you in on something really interesting. This is a song that as soon as I listen to, the very first seconds into it, as you listen to those tropical birds in the background, and you have that sort of, let's say it again, tropical vibe going on in there, this is a song that gave me strong, really strong James Bond vibes, James Bond soundtrack movie vibes. This is something that I really, really love. It sounds adventurous, it sounds dangerous, it sounds sexy at the same time. It is a feeling that Lolody really, or a collection of feelings that Lolody really made sure those would be really felt right from the start. But also you have a dreamy twist to it. You, it seems that anything is possible in that addictive whispering and, well, this song is really, really massive. If I could show that, uh, if I could show you at least the song as I am listening to it and talking to you about it, you would understand how amazing this song is. This is, once again, nothing like what they do right now, but this was the very first song that had orchestral instruments going on. You have the strings quartet going on, full blast. You have the timpani in the background. You have the the orchestral drums, you have everything in there, but then it quiets down after the chorus and then you are taken back to that dreamy, jungle, almost tropical vibe. You listen to the birds chirping in the background, you have the strings in legato basically taking you by the hand in that soundscape and the vocals in the background whispering to you. It's alluring, you know that it is dangerous in some way, but you can't help but go towards the direction in which those vocals are coming from. So this is the type of song that is so, so alluring and magical at the same time that I really can't take my eyes and ears off. And I remember listening to this song and simply leave it on replay. And I would listen to this song for hours without an end. It is amazing. And I love the, the strings direction in this song. It's so beautiful, so, so beautiful. This was, of course, where you could see or hear the the strengths that Takeshi Hama has as a composer of music or uh, music for video games. This is the type of music that you can listen that he created for some of the best known games in the Zelda series. And this is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. One thing that I love about this song is when the bridge kicks in and when the singers start to say I can hear whispering 
and they start to do cannons between themselves, covering for each other and singing on top of the other, which is basically a cannon, finishing their phrases and continuing the song in a really dramatic way, rising the tension only with their vocals, not the instrumental. Their vocals are basically cranking up the tension in this song. When you get to that climax, as the vocals open and go full blast, you are taken to a final part, which is basically the final chorus, but something that I love about Takeshi Hama's compositions is that he always does something really different in the outro. And when you get to that final chorus, Toshikito Anaga goes really high on this vocal range, delivers a beautiful head voice part in a really high note before the chorus kicks in and all three members start to sing in unison. But what happens after that is something that Lolo D does really well, which is to put each member taking turns and dramatically rise the tension to a way in which they are harmonizing, riffing, ad libbing, and you are just with chills all over you. It's something that, for me, really sealed the deal that Lolo D were the thing, were the group to watch, the group to follow. And since then, I have been a big, big, big advocate about Lolo D because they simply are amazing. This is a group that I could listen to their music all the time, although I do know that their music is really, really dark. But this is a group that made sure their music left a mark in more ways than one. And for me, this first impression, coming across this group for the very first time and listening to their music as everyone was listening as well uh, for the very first time, it was a really unique experience. It was something that made me really thankful for being a fan of 2D music and my OCU artists. It was something that otherwise I wouldn't have checked. And I'm so thankful that uh, I actually do this kind of thing of reviewing music by my LCU artists and to the groups because I had the pleasure of coming across this group, this unique group that is one of my all-time favorite groups. And I'm not even saying all-time favorite, favorite groups in the 2D music industry. I'm talking about my all-time favorite groups ever. So this was my take, of course, on Lolo D's Univers. So let's go to the outro. Lolodi's Univers is in a league of its own, and I've said it before, Lolodi is a group with no match, still with no match since their debut in 2020. Of course, uh, it's only been four years since they made their debut, but still, there hasn't been a reply by any other 2D music project or any other 2D group to do something akin to what they are doing, because... Even if you look at 2D groups and you easily will say, well, Growth and Lolo D sound the same. They do not sound the same. They have a similar vibe. At least the, the style of singing is the same. They are both applying lyrical style of singing. But Growth is more towards the fantastical and grandiose, adventurous vibe. And Lolo D is all about that nightmarish tone, that dark undertone that is not, not adventurous at all. And it is far from being the type of music that puts a smile on your face. Of course, both Growth and Lolo D do have um, niche music genres and niche performances that really set them apart. The Univers was the very first time that anyone got to listen to lyrical pop performed with orchestra and with a whole load of instruments. Let me tell you that uh, Takeshi Hama usually composes his songs in a multi-layered way. The song has so much going on in the background that you really would need to listen to it hundreds of times to understand and pick apart each of those elements. It does so really in a fantastical way and for me, I won't say as a fellow composer, but I have composed music in the past and I have done that for almost 10 years. But I would love to be what Takeshi Hama or who Takeshi Hama is as a composer. I really, really envy his skill and I would love to have that talent to create the music that he creates. At the same time, if I was in Takeshi Hama's uh, shoes, if 
they brought in to record their vocals Toshiki Toyanaga, Shunsuke Takeuchi and Daiki Yamashita, I would immediately thank the people that casted them for those roles. They couldn't have chosen a better trio to perform as Lolo D, really. I really couldn't pick a better trio to go behind the mic and perform the songs that Lolo D has. They really nailed the casting. They have three amazing voices, three really technical singers, and if I was in Takeshi Hama's place, I would have rejoiced at seeing who was going to perform my songs. So they are a match made in heaven. Lolo D is a group in which the vocals and the composer are perfect for each other, creating the best we can get. And in Univers, that's what we got. So this was my take on, of course, Lolo D's Univers. This was their very first CD and it was one that marked me a lot. So back to the script. Tell me, if you're a fan of Lolo D, what was your first reaction to this album? And what did immediately attract you to their music? And which is your favorite song in this CD? Mine is, of course, Addictive Whispering, but I would love to know what is yours and why. Let me know in the comments on YouTube and Spotify. And remember, leave your comments as complex or as simple as they may be, and you can be featured on upcoming episodes of Sayu Lounge. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the hand that feeds HQ's weekly mail, Sayu, and music related content, hit the subscribe button. And if you are listening to this episode on a podcast listening platform, please consider following the podcast and leaving a review. Leaving a review is really simple and helps other people find this podcast and fall in love with my LCU artists and 2D groups. I'll return next week with another episode of Sayu Lounge. Thank you for listening and see you guys around. <laughs>